Hello, hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Alright, so in the previous um, lecture, we have looked at the Newton's second law approach to solve t three degree of freedom um, example. And for this lecture, I'm going to show you how to solve um, using the eigenvalue approach. Okay. So what is eigenvalue and eigenvector? Okay, an eigenvector describes the movement of each mass and the direction of each mass relative to each other. So what, what does it mean by that? So basically, eigenvector is actually the mode shape. Because the mode shape describes the movement of each mass and direction of each mass relative to each other. So that is eigenvector. Okay, how about eigenvalue? So basically, eigenvalue is basically the natural frequencies. Okay? So let's see for this example, eigenvalue omega 1. So basically, eigenvalue is actually the natural frequencies, while eigenvector is actually the mode shape. So for eigenvalue problems, Okay, um, you can refer to your notes in page 37. Okay, um, let's straight away focus on how to solve it using the eigenvalue approach. Let's consider the previous example that we have done with um, using the Newton's second law approach. Okay, in order for you to use this approach, basically first you need to have the equation of motion. So this is the equation of motion um, from the pre previous example using Newton's second law. So the important part of using this eigenvalue approach is that you need to know that delta is equals to lambda i minus matrix D dynamical or we call it dynamical matrix is equals to zero this is how we find the determinant okay so in order for you to use the eigenvalue solution okay basically you must have all of this and what is d okay d is what we call as dynamical matrix where d is equals to matrix k inverse okay multiplied by matrix m that is the dynamical matrix is basically k matrix k inverse by multiplied by matrix m and what is matrix i matrix i is identity matrix and what is lambda okay this lambda is actually a bit different from the previous example whereby we assume lambda is equal to 1 over omega squared okay so from here we know that this is actually the mass matrix and this is actually our k matrix so in order for us to use the eigenvalue solution first we need to de determine the dynamical matrix whereby dynamical matrix is actually matrix k inverse multiplied by matrix M. From this equation of motion, okay, from this equation of motion, we already know what is the M. Okay, what we need to determine now is we need to determine the matrix K inverse. So, the step, okay, first, we need to identify dynamical matrix, which is K inverse multiply by matrix M. We know that the mass matrix or is actually I can write it as 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 okay okay so basically it's actually also the same as M 
zero 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 m sorry zero m zero 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 m okay but we take um the term m okay all of this term outside so that we can get in term we can get it in terms of numbers like this okay so for matrix k we do the same we know that previously the matrix k is 2k minus k 0 minus k 2k minus 1 sorry minus k 0 minus k and k so we take all the terms k okay in order to get it number because we need to use our calculator now so we take out all of this and it will become k two minus one zero minus one two minus one zero minus one one. Okay. So in order for us to find k inverse, we can straight away use our calculator. Okay. Okay, for those who don't know how to use a calculator, please Google on how um, can you get the inverse matrix for using the calculator. So basically, if I inverse all of this, I will get K okay, inverse, it will become 1 over K, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, Two, one, two, three. Okay, so this is the k inverse using calculator. And now, in order for us to get the dynamical matrix, so D is M over K one, one, one. 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3. So how do I get this one? It's basically by using K inverse matrix multiplied by matrix M. So this is basically our dynamical matrix. Alright. So in order for us to get the determinant, you know that lambda i minus dynamical matrix. Okay, we need to use this one. So basically, this is okay. So if I multiply lambda multiply by identity matrix, and we know that the dynamical matrix is a three times three matrix, so it become lambda 0 0 0 lambda 0 0 0 lambda minus the dynamical matrix which are 1 1 1 1 2 1 2 1 2 3 okay and it's equals to 0 so to in order for us to get the determinant, okay, first we solve this one first. It will become lambda minus m over k minus m over k. If I solve this, if I solve this, I will get this one minus m over k. Minus M over K Lambda minus 2M over K Minus 2M over K Minus M over K Minus 2M over K and lambda minus 2m over, 
sorry, lambda minus 3m over k. So basically, if I solve this one, I will get this one. And similar to the previous um, example, so if I divide If I, if let's say I divide everything by If I let alpha equals to m over k lambda okay, Because we want to simplify everything We have got too many terms here We've got the terms lambda, we've got the term m, we've got the term k here okay? So because we want to simplify this Okay, so we let lambda, uh, we let alpha is equal to m over k lambda, and in order for us to do that, we need to divide all of this with lambda. Okay, so if I divide everything in here by lambda, okay, what I will get is that I will get divide by lambda what I will get is that I will get 1 minus m over k lambda and minus m over k lambda minus m over k lambda minus m over k lambda, minus m over k lambda 1 minus 2m over k lambda minus 2m over k lambda minus m over k lambda minus 2m over k lambda and 1 minus 3m over k lambda so basically if I Divide everything by lambda, okay. Okay, divide all of this by lambda, and we need to let alpha is equals to m over k lambda, okay. This one, this one, all of these will be converted to alpha. So, what we will get is that we will get that alpha is equal to m over k lambda. So, what we will get is that we will get 1 minus lambda minus lambda. Sorry, minus alpha, minus alpha, minus alpha, 1 minus 2 alpha, minus 2 alpha, minus alpha, minus 2 alpha, 1 minus 3 alpha. So if we replace all of this term here, m over k lambda, is equal to alpha from here it will become like this next we need to use Serra's rule using Serra's rule so we need to find the determinant we need to identify what is the alpha here okay, by using Serra's rule I will get 1 minus alpha 1 minus 2 alpha, 1 minus 3 alpha, minus 4 alpha squared, minus negative alpha, minus 
minus alpha, 1 minus three alpha, minus negative alpha, negative two alpha, plus, okay, I'm going to put it down here because I don't have enough space, minus alpha, minus alpha, minus two alpha, minus, minus alpha, one, minus two alpha, okay, this is by using Sarah's rule, okay, and then solve everything, it become one minus alpha, one minus three alpha, minus two alpha, plus six alpha squared, minus four alpha squared, plus alpha, okay, because negative and negative, it become positive, plus alpha, minus alpha, plus three alpha squared, minus two alpha squared, Okay, since I don't have enough space, so I can change it down here. Minus alpha, 2 alpha squared, plus alpha, minus 2 alpha squared. Okay, this is again, this is purely mathematics. Okay, so I hope we don't have any issues on this. Okay, and then we proceed, it will become 1 minus alpha. Okay, what I always do is that I always um, try to rearrange everything, find the biggest term first. So for the first one is alpha squared is the biggest term. So it becomes 2 alpha squared minus 5 alpha plus 1 plus alpha alpha squared minus alpha minus alpha multiply by alpha equals to zero and then solve again it become two alpha squared minus five alpha plus 1 minus 2 alpha cube plus 5 alpha squared minus alpha plus alpha cube minus alpha squared minus alpha squared equals to 0 and we arrange, we arrange everything, put the biggest term first in the end, what we will get, we will get minus alpha cube plus 5 alpha squared minus 6 alpha plus 1 equals to 0. Okay, in the end, it will become like this. Okay, now we need to identify what is the value of alpha here. Okay, so we can use our calculator straight away. Why? Because we know that alpha is equals to okay, we know that alpha is e sorry, we know that alpha is equals to m over k lambda and then um, from here we know that If we replace the lambda, we know that lambda, okay, lambda is actually 1 over omega squared. Therefore, from here, if we replace lambda is equals to 1 over omega squared here, we know that alpha is equals to m omega squared over k. Right? 
So we know that we need to find the natural frequencies, which is omega. So from here, we know that omega is actually square root alpha k over m. Okay. So basically, we need to find the alpha first. After we find the alpha, then we need to convert it into omega values here. So from here, okay, we need to identify the values. Okay, so by using calculator, alpha 1, is equals to 0 0.1981 alpha 2 is equals to 1.555 and alpha 3 is equals to 3.247 so again write it again we know that alpha is equals to m over k lambda and if we replace this lambda value we will get alpha is equal to m omega squared over k because lambda is 1 over omega squared therefore in order for us to add, to get omega omega is actually square root of alpha k over m so In order for us to find the omega, because that is what the question asks for, so omega 1 is 0.4451 square root k over m, omega 2 is 1.247 square root k over m, and omega 3 is 1.802 square root k over m so basically this is how um, we're going to get the natural frequencies using the eigenvalue approach okay so basically the eigenvalue approach is that first you need to identify the dynamical matrix and then second, find the determinant using this one. Okay. And then replace, um, divide everything by K in here. Uh, sorry, divide everything by lambda. And let alpha is equals to M over K lambda. Okay, you will get this one. Okay, well, divide by lambda. And then when you replace alpha is equals to m over k lambda you will get this one the next use Serros rule use Serros rule and then when you solve it you need to get the alpha value okay use your calculator you use your calculator once you get all of this alpha value okay find the omega using this approach so you already got the natural frequencies for this. All right, now. So how do we find the mode shape? Okay, I always recommend that you need to do one more step here. Get the lambda value. Okay. We already got the alpha value here. We already got the omega value here. Okay. Get the alpha get the lambda value. So we know that lambda is where should I write it? Okay, let's should I write it here. Lambda is one over omega squared. Okay. So 
get the lambda value. So lambda 1, lambda 1 is 5 over 5048. Sorry, 5 over 48 M over K. 0.643 m over k and lambda 3 is equal to 0.308 m over k okay why do we need to find all of this okay because if we want to find the mode shape okay if we want to find the mode shape, we need to recall back these matrix. Okay, so these matrix. Okay, in order for us to find the mode shape, okay, recall back that matrix. I write it out again. Lambda minus m over k minus m over k minus m over k minus m over k lambda minus 2m over k minus 2m over k minus m over k minus 2m over k lambda minus 3m over k okay all of you need to do this, yeah? If you don't write it down, you won't get it. Okay, we call back this matrix and we know that this one multiplied by A1, A2, A3 is equals to 0. So, in order for us to get the mode shape, okay, first use the value of lambda, let's say we start with lambda 1 okay, we know that for lambda 1 goes to 5.048 m over k therefore if we replace the value lambda 1 in all of the lambda terms here what we will get is that we will get 4.048 Minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 3.048, minus 2, minus 1, minus 2, 2.048. A1, A2, A3, equals to 0. Okay, so the same approach is that. We need to find the ratio A2 over A1 because okay, you know that the mode shape X1 is actually A1 over A1, A2 over A1, and A3 over A1. Okay, so we need to get um, the ratio from this matrix, from this matrix here. Okay. So, what we get for the first equation, okay, if we extract this, if we convert it into, um, if we convert this one, multiply by this one, this one, multiply by this one, this one, multiply by this one, okay, in the end, we will get three equation, minus A2 minus A3 equals to zero. That's the first equation. Minus A1 plus 3.048 A2 minus 2 A3 equals to 0. Second equation. The third equation we will get minus A1 2 A2 plus 2.048 A3 equals to 0. Okay. Basically, from that matrix, we'll get three equations here. 
and same approach the important thing is that we need to find the ratio ratio of a2 over a1 and ratio of a3 over a1 okay use your own um, ways in order for you to find so what I normally do is that okay, from here I know that from the first um, equation Okay, basically the important part is that we need to get rid of either the term A2 or the term A3 in order for us to find the ratio. So my approach is that what I normally do is that, okay, it depends on situation. So if let's say what I do is the first equation, okay, if I first equation multiply by negative 2, so I will get negative 8.096 a1 plus 2a2 plus 2a3 equals to 0. Again, this is again math. What I, the important thing is that you need to find the ratio. So if I write it as equation 4. Okay, in order for me to find the ratio, equation 4 plus equation 2 that become negative 9.096 a1 plus 5.048 a2 equals to 0. Therefore, a2 over a1 is equal to 9.096 divided by 5.048, which is equal to 1.802. Okay, now I have solved for the ratio a2 over a1. So in order for me to find the ratio of A3 over A1, again, this depends on the situation and how you want to do it as long as you get the ratio. So if I do equation 4 plus equation 3, what I will get is that negative 9096A1 plus 4.048A3 equals to 0. Therefore, the ratio of A3 over A1 is equals to 2.247. Right. So, therefore, the first mode, okay, the first mode, X1 is, okay, I write it down just for you to, Remember, A1 over A1, A2 over A1, A3 over A1. Okay, always remember this, yeah? Which is A1 over A1, we know that it become 1. A2 over A1, which is this one, 1, 1.802. And the ratio of A3 over A1 is 2.247. Okay, that is for the first mode shape. Okay, so again, the step, first thing is that you recall back this matrix, okay, and then second, replace lambda, the value of, let's say we start with, because we want to find the first mode, so first mode, okay, is related with omega 1, lambda 1, alpha 1. But since in here, what we have is the term of lambda, so we use lambda 1. Lambda 1, 5.048, okay, replace in this, and then I will get this matrix, okay. And then from this matrix, okay, we convert it into three equations, okay. Same approach like uh, before using the Newton second law. And then the important part is that you need to find the ratio of A2 over A1 and A3 over A1. And in the end, you will get the answer. Okay, for the second mode, same approach. Okay, you recall back that equation. But now, you need to use the second lambda. So for lambda 2 which is 0 0.643 okay again replace the 0 
in this matrix yeah okay in this matrix and then it becomes something like this a different value then you convert it into three equations so the equations that I will get is negative 0 0.357 a1 minus a2 minus a3 is equals to 0 that is your first equation second equation negative a1 negative 1.357 a2 minus 2 a3 equals to 0 second approach second equation third one negative a1 minus 2 a2 minus 2.357 a3 equals to 0 the third equation so remember what we need to find is we need to get the ratio a1 over a1 it will always become 1 a2 over a1 and a3 over a1 okay so again use your creativity so what i did is i normally uh, would do is first equation um, multiply by minus 2 i will get zero point seven one four a one plus two a two plus two a three equals to zero I write it as the fourth equation so in order to get the ratio so equation four plus equation two I will get negative zero point two eight six a one plus 0 0.643 a2 equals to 0 therefore a2 over a1 is equal to 0 0.445 okay in order for me to get the a3 over a1 ratio what i do is equation 4 plus equation 3 become negative 0 0.286 a1 minus 0 0.357 a3 equals to 0 therefore a3 over a1 is equals to negative 0 0.801 thus for the second mode shape which is using the value of second lambda the second mode shape will become 1 0 0.445 which is from here that one will become negative 0 0.801 so this is the second mode shape okay so for the third mode shape okay again the same it's the same one use the third one which is for lambda 3 equals to not remember what is the lambda 3 lambda 3 is 0. 308 m over k 0 0.308 m over k okay, use this one use this value replace it back in here replace back in this matrix get all of those equation and you will get the third mode shape all right i'm not going to show it here okay i hope you can try to do it try yourself okay so basically if i compare this approach here yeah? okay this is the first mode shape which is 1, 1.802 and 2.247 and then the second mode shape is this one so if I refer back okay look at this value here if I refer back using the Newton Newton second law approach okay
Okay, so it is the same. Basically, it's the same. Why? Because it's the same. Um, it, because it's the same example. Thus, we get the same. Same goes to second mode. This is what you will get. And if you do it for the third mode, you will also get this value. So basically. Basically, you will get the same mode shape for example 3, either you use, um, either you use Newton's second law, So basically, if you compare Newton's second law and eigenvalue approach, you will get the same mode shape. Okay, I hope you can try. Alright, see you again next time. Thank you.